Okay, I think we're back. Let's wait for chat and see if it's better now. It's not just a microphone sound. Yeah, I just restarted OBS. Ah, better. Yes, sound all good. Hi, hi, yes. Oh, 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 okay, okay, confirmed good. Yeah, okay, so I just closed OBS and started OBS. Best fix ever. Way better. 
So, happy birthday! Why, thank you very much! Holy Philip goes into it straight away with 10 euros! Happy birthday, Quindor! Thank you very much, Philip. That's very appreciated. Time for a new computer. Yes, I'm actually building a new Street PC, but the memory kit I got for that died, and it's still at the shop until they send me a new one, so I'm hoping to get that soon, and then we'll be upgrading this uh, old little guy who's struggling, as, as you can see, to an 8-core Ryzen, uh, I think actually 5000 series now, uh, with an X570 motherboard and all the good stuff. So that is certainly coming, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of stuck without memory. OBS or BS? Oh, BS. Yes. Happy birthday, Quindor. So what's the plan for today? Congratulations, by the way. Well, if you watched the last live stream, the Queen Boxed Live, I unpacked a certain lighting figure lamp thingy. And we're going to modify that today to go from normal analog LEDs that are in there right now to awesome addressable LEDs because hey what else are you going to do and last time I couldn't remember who on the discord uh, actually someone else did this and I'm basically stealing their idea first let me make an announcement everyone wait 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 it's not going right we're live come hang out there we go. Do you want this to send this to everyone? Yes. And now I'm going to look in the Dutch chat, but I probably have to scroll back a long while. Does anybody remember his name? Because I forgot again. I knew I thought that, okay, I need to remember this. And then I forgot. <laughs> oh God, I need to scroll too much. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's actually DR44DST44L. He came up with this idea. I'm basically stealing his idea. And uh, while well, it, it looked really nice, I was like, hey. <laughs> I did it. Yep, that's you. Teflon memory. <laughs> okay. Jeroen de van de Geer. Hi. So, uh, again, I'm stealing DR44DST44L's idea. Uh, uh, his execution looked really nice. So let's hope we can do somewhat of the same today. And, uh, yeah, we're going to modify a, a light we bought on AliExpress, basically. But let's, uh, let's give people a few more minutes. Uh, I started the stream slightly early again, because, you know, that's the thing. Hello, friends. So, how has your day been? Do you know it's Draadstraal? Draadstraal, right? Haha, <laughs> what? We're expecting snow in the Netherlands. Uh, they're expecting it to snow for like 16 or 26 hours straight this weekend, starting tomorrow night. And I really like snow, especially if I don't have to go anywhere. But we're in Corona lockdown, so we're not allowed to go anywhere anyway. So I'm really excited for that. Because um, we don't get snow every year. And if we do, it's only for a short period. And we had some earlier this year, which was nice. But uh, yeah, I really hope it's uh, going to stay for a few days. I'm going ice skating next week. Nice. Yeah, here too. 15 centimeters here. Oh, wow, Philip. 15 meters of 12 volt 60 LED per meter RGBW. Do you think two injection points would be fine? Start and end. If it's 12 volt, um, I generally say you can inject front end uh, per 10 meters. Um... But it depends what you're going to do with it. The very quick rule I use is you don't want an injection point to need to give off more than 3 to 4 amps. So if you look up in the power sheet how much uh, power you're going to draw for, for instance, for 50% white. And then divide that by 2. If both of those go above 3 to 4 amps, you probably are going to need another injection point. If they don't, you're probably fine. So that's very quick uh, quick and dirty. Oh, his nickname. Okay, so DR44DSTL44L is Draadstal. I guess he's Dutch. Uh, my mouse is actually... Oh, there it is. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Hi all, from Michigan here. Snow here too, yeah. 
Yeah, we're kind of more in a wet country. It it, it gets wet a lot. <laughs> it's either warm or cold, but often wet. No, not much snow. In the Netherlands, finally, just nature ice. Oh, nice. I hope it will be way too much for people's liking because so many people will stay at home because of the snow, right? That's awesome. We have to stay at home because of Corona, but then never, no one does because they're stupid. And so then they're snowed in and they can't go out anyway. Perfect solution. So you're going to use the 332 meters Cobb LED strip for this or the usual 144 meters. Well, I have the 144 meters in RGBW. So SK6812, and uh, well, I have the 332 meters, and actually when I got that strip and I was testing it in the kitchen, uh, my girlfriend said to me, that is the most beautiful LED strip I have ever seen. So I think we're going to try the 332 LEDs per meter strip. Gotcha, so probably do one in the middle then. Uh, most likely, yes, for the 15 meters. I think Quinter only pretends he's Dutch. <laughs> well, I could do a stream in Dutch, but then nobody would understand. I think Quinter only... Oh, wait, I said that. Quinter and Avondklok. Prima comi. Yeah, right? It's 40 degrees or minus 10, but always <laughs> No school with a lot of snow, I guess. No trains. Hi all from Switzerland. Hi there. For the first time in years, Denmark actually has negative temperature all day long and so far for two weeks... Winter has come. Yes. Yeah, I know. I know some lead speak, but then it's Dutch lead speak, and it's, you know, uh, yeah. So, now that it's my birthday, uh, how old do you guys think I, I, I have become? It's interesting to know. And before anyone says anything, yes, I have, uh, like, winter rashes and stuff like that. It sucks, but not much I can do about it. 17. No. 65. Why thanks, uh, Roman. That's not very kind. 27. 100. 43. 42. Dustin is the winner. <laughs> mentally or physically? Well, let's not talk about mentally. <laughs> oh, oh, it's still going. 41. 36. 48. 41. 38. Yeah, no, I have, I think I have become 42. I kind of lost track at some point. Uh, but uh, my girlfriend today confirmed I was 42. So, yes. And exactly, Johnny, 42 is always the right answer. So if we get stuck somewhere today, the answer is very easy. It's 42. Simple as that. You are then the answer to the universe. Well, I don't know about that. I might be the answer to your LED questions. But <laughs> that's not exaggerated here. I'll become 42 this summer. Okay, cool, Emil. I didn't know we were the same age. 28, with a couple of years of experience. Yeah, I've, I'm have i turning 25 for like the 12th, 13th time. I don't know. <laughs> so long and thanks for all the fish. Absolutely. <laughs> Volt, watt, LED. No, 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 just 42. Yes. Almost 41 myself. Cool. You discover that like almost every year, Quindor. What do I discover? The age I am? I guess. I don't really pay too much attention to it. So, let's see if we've uh, gathered a few people here. 147. Welcome, everyone. Uh, let's see if I prepared some stuff right. Uh, I think this works. Oh, there's the rash. Yeah. I hope you guys can look past that. Sorry about that, but it's you know, it's winter. My skin's like, no, this sucks. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but uh, yeah, what do I do about it? Um, let's get the giant box out of here, out here. Uh, oh, we need these. These are the connection terminals, non-focus, Y camera, what are you doing to me? I'm going to manual focus that thing. Hold on. So these are connection terminals, but let me get the big box first. Oh. It says uh, desk lamp, and this is straight from the uh, the previous queen box. Oh, I taped it shut. 
Oh, a friend of mine had over hold his body. Yeah, that sucks. There's not much you can do about it. We're trying to do something with humidity and stuff like that, but yeah, it just sucks. Oh well, oh well. Just your closest 148 friends here. <laughs> nice. Okay, so let me... Oh, I can't see chat right now. Wow, that's overexposed. Okay, let me get this thing out. Because this is how they shipped it. It's actually pretty good. But, uh, yeah. Let's try and get as little of those tiny little particles on my disc as possible. I think I already filled with that, but that's okay. Okay. Oh no, it, it went everywhere. Okay, okay, okay. So, we're talking about this, uh, nope, other way around. This lamp. And as you can see, if I turn it around, it's a little heart shape. Aww. And it's Valentine soon. And I was thinking, okay, right now this is a dumb, bad quality. Um, analog LED warm white LED strip have you and uh, well we're going to be replacing that with uh, a digitally addressable LED strip I'm not even in the shop there we go why am I not in the shop so we're going to be replacing that with digitally addressable LED strip let me turn that music down a little bit and um, as I said, Draad Stahl or DR44, STL, something um, has already done that. So let's see how straightforward it is. Hmm. There's a ribbon in here. That's not good. We'll see. So let's see chat. It's not that bad. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, nice, the yellow tape. Oh, yeah. They. I mean, how do we package this? More yellow tapes. Always the answer. Not to get off topic, but give me a teaser about on um, best low-cost Chinese cop downlight DC. I want to put some of my decades to work. Yeah, um, there will be more videos about that in the future this year. Uh, but currently, I don't know. I did order a few models to test, but I haven't gotten around to that yet. Hey, Quindor. Hey, chat. Still, I'm late. Still have pizza. Oh, pizza's good. That's a good excuse. Yeah, Peeps kind party. Yeah. Andy, finally, you missed the party. Well, no, we just got started. That's okay. Have you ever installed LED strip inside of an old monitor? DIY Perks made a video about it like two years ago, and it's absolutely amazing because the diffused plastic spreads the light evenly. No, I've not. Um, no, I, I saw that video, but no, I've not. More people have done it already. Yeah, that's true. So, um, where shall we start? Hmm. These are riveted. That sucks. Let's... Uh, Let's try and uh, pry the base off first, because it's some kind of sticky, sticky stuff. Well, coming off, we can re-glue that. That's no problem. And you guys get to see what's inside earlier than I do. Okay, so that was pretty easy. We can uh, reattach that later on. Oh, okay. Oh, I can't reach the camera to refocus. Sorry. Um, but I do have my USB cam here. And I guess uh, I could show you. So there is a, a nut there. And then there is a LED driver. What does it say? Yeah, I can't, I can't read it like that. Output, 60 to 90 volts. Oh, wow. 300 milliamps. Okay, so there's a constant current circuit in here right now, but we're just going to replace all that. That's fine. What's this giant thing? Is it just a weight? I don't know. Interesting. See, I'm, I'm opening this for the first time, I uh, too. Quindo, where's the beer and cake? Well, my girlfriend baked some cake, but it's just out of the oven, so it's not done yet. And, uh, well, I've got I've got Coke. I mean, hey, cheers. Yeah, it's probably just a weight, right? Hmm. 
Now, there's a clip here. I guess I could show you guys. Right? That's maybe the idea of this whole thing. So, there's a little uh, clip here. Uh, let's undo that. It's a crappy connector. Ah. Oh, well, oh, okay, well, this isn't stuck down very well. So let's just get that out of here. Okay, so this has the AC connection uh, to DC. Or I think it's DC, I'm not entirely... Oh, there we go. Okay. okay. Um... So this is the AC connection coming in. I'm just going to snip that because I do not think I will need it. Okay, driver detached. And then this, ah, oh, okay. Now we have the whole cable detached. Okay, no more cable. That's fine. Now, I wonder if this hole would be big enough for the plug I want to use for power. That would be awesome. Let's try and get this out. Okay, I got the gasket out. Okay. So I'm going to be using uh, some of these uh, plug-in sockets. Hello, another LED chapter. Yep. And I hope we can just fit this in here. Oh, so close. No, the ballast, the weight is in the way. Uh, that's too bad. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't think you can see that. It's hitting the top of the weight. I guess we could just move the weight. Is it just stuck down? Well, there's a nut there. Okay, so we might need to remove this nut. Because that's probably what sticks uh, the rest of the structure. Um, you might be able to turn the weight, yeah. But let's see if I can get a wrench to undo that nut. But I have to leave you guys alone for a little bit for that. So I'll be right back. Okay, I got myself a toolbox. Um. So, hmm, that cable's going to be a problem. Okay, I can pull up the diffusing part. Oh, and I can pull out the diffusing part. That's nice. The The barrel connector, a generic barrel connector, can cope with about uh, 5 amps, let's say. So, yeah. So, you can easily pull this diffuser off. Let's do that. Let's just remove it for now. That's nice. That means we don't have to deconstruct the whole structure. Uh, let's put that here for now. Let me put this off.
Yesterday I discovered that the Quinn LED Dig Uno is actually a Quinn LED Dig Duo. It is, if you're using a ESP32 with it, you then have two output channels. That is correct. It was a little secret feature I built in years ago, <laughs> and now it's actually becoming useful. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be a problem because, well, the cable is there. Uh, let's see if we can pull this LED strip out a little bit. It's probably stuck in there. No, it's not stuck in there very much. Okay, well, there is a cable clip there. Let's snip that. Sorry if I can't give you guys a better image, but there's a little clip here holding down the, uh, the cable, I think. I'm just going to demolish it. There we go. Let's see if I... Ah, yes. I can pull out, pull back the cable now, but of course... Um, hold on. Of course, the, the plug isn't going to go through. So that makes sense, but we're just going to snip everything off. Okay, the plug is gone. So now I can actually... Okay, wow, this is flimsy LED strip. Ha! <laughs> Holy... Well, I guess there doesn't have to be a lot of copper in it because they're running 60 to 90 volts, I believe. Well, the, yeah, then you don't need a lot of copper. Eh. Okay. So let's try and save that LED strip somewhat. Wow, that's flimsy. Look at that. Uh, I'll, do it here. I'll do it here. There's like almost no copper in there. But as I said, if you're running that high a voltage, yeah, I guess you don't need to. 2835 100D 7mm RB. Okay. Interesting. Well, might take a look at that later. Okay. So now we might be able to access the nut. Do we need to access the nut? Yeah, we want to move the ballast. That's right. Nope. Nope. I hope I have a... <laughs> I hope I have one for that. Almost. Eh, that could work, I guess. Wait, where did my connection thing go? Oh, it's on here. I need to find the right parts. Just use a bigger grip to unbolt the knot. Yeah, we can look at that too. But let me try and, and if this works. Uh, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Hmm. So I think this was almost the right size. Sorry to if I'm boring you guys. Oh, this is it. Okay. Try and hand untighten. There we go. Okay. Okay. So we got the nut loose. Yep. Yeah, now we can uh, we can move the ballast. So let's see if we can move it in a way that we can fit the plug. So if we do it like this. Uh, I, I need to re-angle the camera. We're not bored. It's your birthday. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So you can see the hole over here. And if we angle it like that, uh, let's see if we can fit it in there. And we can. Cool. 
it'll be tight regarding cables, but eh, it's okay. Oh, and how do I get the nut in there? Hmm. I do want to remove that little plastic thingy. Because that serves no purpose now. Gelukkige verjaardag en groet uit België. Thank you, Eric Woof. Okay. So I guess we could just take this out for now. And, uh, well, there it is. Screw it back once we're done. I mean, it's actually metal, I think. Uh, metal, plastic, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But, well, we just have it apart right now. Let me clean off the desk a little bit. There we go. I don't need that anymore. Don't need these. Do need that. Okay, so. We have our nut. Well, let's put it on here before we lose it. So sensible. And, uh, wait, this can go come out too? Oh, okay, this comes out too. Veel geluk met de verjaardag. Hope that you did leest. Yeah, I, li I read most of the chat. So they have a little nut or uh, uh, a little uh, plug here that is actually hollow. So the cables run through that and that screws in here. And then on the inside, it tightens with the nut. So it becomes a hole. And then you can add this, uh, this little weight. Oh, there's a plug in here. Hmm. I'm not going to look at what's inside. It's probably sand or something like that to keep it cheap. But yeah, a little weight at the base. Okay, but now we've got an area to work with. So now we can fit this through, as you can see here. And then in the end, we tighten that with this nut. Let's see if that works. Although... I am starting to think we might need to drill a second hole anyway, uh, because this is a metal enclosure and uh, Wi-Fi won't really be able to get out. But we've been working. Yeah, this 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 will work in the end. Okay, let's unscrew that again. Do check for radioactive elements before opening that thingy. Yeah, let's not open it. Okay, so that's going to work, but, but, um, I was thinking of using one of my Quinn LED uh, ESP32 prototypes, and I will have some news about that at the end of the video. Um, this is actually one I experimented with, because if you look really closely, you see there's a chip here missing, because this is one I used, uh, I, I blew up a few of them, in some experiments I did with over voltage and drawing lots of amps and stuff like that to test the board. That worked all as expected, so that's good. But I didn't remember that I actually blew up the one that had the external antenna. Now, the chip that's blown will make USB not work anymore. But the, I, I tested it and WLED still comes online, so we're still going to be using it. <laughs> Because I don't have another external antenna version handy right now. Although soon we'll have a lot more. Um, so that's what we're going to be using. But then I need a hole for the antenna. Because, well, it needs to go external. Um, hmm. Let's first see if that is the same size hole. So let's unscrew this antenna. Let me turn the USB off for a bit. There we go. And then would this fit? Okay, I need to unscrew this nut. Yeah, it barely fits. The hole is slightly too big actually, but it's okay. When I don't want, I bought a bunch of sticker antennas for the case when I don't want a huge antenna sticking out. Oh, I think I might actually have some of those. Hmm. 
No, we can drill a hole, that's fine. Um, but I think I am not going to do that on camera, because that's going to give a giant mess on my desk. And I often do electronics testing here, and if there's all kinds of uh, um, metal shards here, that's not going to be good. Uh, okay, let's see what else we need to figure out. Let me get the LED strip we're going to use. I hate you for using this external antenna soon 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 can i should i share it now i'll share it now i i i shared a preview on discord uh but let me let me get an image here because previously i mentioned that we were doing a first production run of 100 boards well that production run let's see image has since finished. Uh, okay. So, this is a first image of a Quinn LED ESP32, which will be replacing the, the mini D1 Mini and D1 Mini 32 boards and stuff like that. And, well, this is one off of the actual first production run of 100, and we're still doing some internal tests, and then we'll assemble some kits with external antennas and stuff like that. And then we'll be selling these 100. The, there'll be an announcement on the Discord only, because I think they'll be gone after that, um, to people who want to be the first to get this thing and test them for me, so that I know if I can release these en masse or not. And there will be a variant using the external antenna connector, as you can see there. And there will be a variant using uh, on an onboard antenna like you're used to. Maybe a button. Yeah, I'm not going to add a button. That's too much work today. The kind of a hack of the 11.1. Oh, yeah, the multi-channel, yeah. Will be able to purchase just the ASP32 without Dig Uno? Yes, in the future you will be, yes. Great man, that looks awesome. Is there a wiki anywhere? I was thinking of putting up two strips tomorrow. Yeah, I have some info about multi-strip on my website. You can look that up. If there's an update of publishing the Gerber files, I'm not publishing Gerber files. Uh, there will be an update to the boards at some point in the future, but that's, uh, that's still a little bit out. Now I have to up upgrade everything to USB-C, right? Exactly. Let's uh, share another one. Let's see here. Browse. So this is the back. So oh, you can uh, you can see the pinout and the shape of the board. Uh, there are some uh, pins that I added uh, above the normal uh, um, Mini 32. So there's pins with a star that's normally not included in the pinout. And you can see on the right, there's a ground, a, sec a second ground on top. And then there's an extra 3.3 volt and an extra 5 volt fused. So 5 volt F. Uh, that is running through the onboard fuse that this uh, development board has, which the original one doesn't have. Uh, yeah, testing it in Belgium for you. Good. So I just wanted to share that. And let, uh, I, have a more, I have a few more images. Let me just see which one is interesting. Yeah, here, here it is hooked up. And I made sure that I made an, I did an orange LED because I thought it was a nice color combined with the other colors. And uh, I made sure it's very, very dim. <laughs> so no more onboard LED outshining your normal LEDs. A very, very dim. That is exactly what I need. I have multiple dig unos running in a metal enclosure and they barely get any signal. An external antenna would be great. Well, as I said, we'll be doing some... A, a, we've done a test run. I'm hoping to be able to release those next week, but it's kind of iffy with Chinese New Year and stuff like that. 
Uh, but if possible, I'll do an announcement on my Discord where people on my Discord will be able to buy one to uh, basically field test these things for me. I have extensive... I have extensively tested them and they they work fine for me and everything I've done with them. But before I commit to making like a thousand, uh, yeah, let's figure out if, uh, if it actually works for other people too. Let's mod a bright blue LED on that. Well, I could tell you how to do that if you really, really want to. But I ended up putting a wireless access point right next to the Unos. Yeah, well, using an external antenna will easily fix that. Is the antenna only for Wi-Fi or also for Bluetooth? They are. It's for both. So it's a 2.4 gigahertz antenna, and the chip uses the, the same radio for both, basically. Yeah, antenna on USB 32 is shared. Some, if, if you need someone to test external antenna, let me know. Well, just be on the Discord. I'll do an announcement there when the shop uh, opens the page, basically. And uh, I only have so much, so many. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm going to restrict uh, the amount of a uh, single person can buy it. I'm looking into that, but yeah. Can we just buy the ESP? So also we have our Dig Uno Quad. Yes. In the future, you will be able to, but the first release, you will, uh, it, will, it will just be the ESP. And it will also come without solder pins, so you'll have to uh, solder pins onto it yourself. Uh, and this first batch is really meant for people to test out the new board and see if it's it's ready for release into the public or maybe I still need to change a few things and stuff like that. That's perfect, just want the ESP. Yeah, no, in the future we'll be definitely also be selling the just the ESP itself. No worries about that. Source our own pins? No, I think we'll include the pins. I have um, uh, quite a few Queen LED controllers. Yeah, don't worry. And uh, I'm also still working on... Um, on this guy, so the Ethernet uh, Ethernet plan, and that's basically an extension uh, of the custom ESP32 board. That's why I was able to do it, uh, but that will fall a little bit later, and will this will only be sold as is, so as a complete stack. Uh, I'm not going to make it so that you can use your own Queen LED ESP32 to add Ethernet. If you buy the Ethernet option, it's always an ESP32 with the Ethernet on there. And then uh, we uh, we plug it into the Dig Uno. There we go. Yeah. Anyway, we're kind of sidetracking here. Um, so I wanted to leave you guys with that. And um, I will, I think, drill a hole like somewhere on this side. Because power will come into here. Your daughter turned 14 today also. Nice. I like the Ethernet option. Yeah, that is coming. Um, I've already started writing the articles for it. And I've been testing it for a few weeks now. And I've done a revision of the board. And that's all looking great. So, uh, yeah, more to come. More to come. Um, so, this will go here. That's that's That hole is actually the exact right size. So, I'm thinking we do... Let's see. This normally sits like that. I'm thinking we do the antenna over here. What do you guys think? So I drill a hole over here. So then both plugs will be at the back. Are you certain you'll need an external antenna? I'm not 100% certain because the back is of course open. Hmm. Do we want to try it with a board antenna? I can, I, mean, I have more board antenna boards so that's, that'd actually be easier. Because then, oh, no, nope. Use this one in <laughs> testing too. Uh, yeah, blew up that chip. But anyway, I have uh, I have some normal D1 uh, minis and Ethernets and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Is the Ethernet PUE? No, it is not. Oh no, not PUE again. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, maybe in a later state, stadia, stadia, st uh, period, whatever. I'm, I'll make a Ethernet version of it. But that's not going to be very useful for LEDs. I had great results in the lamp foot using onboard antenna. Okay. Well, I'll leave it up to you guys. Do we want to... Did I go away, drill a hole, and then use an external antenna? Or are we just going to try it with an onboard antenna? Let me know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat.
Well, if if we do the external antenna, um, where is it? I lost the antenna. Uh, if you put it in here, this is the the bendy type, so you could actually bend it like that. Or I mean, you could put it up like that, but uh, yeah, I can see why that would be slightly obnoxious. But you can just twist it like that. It's still external and not as visible. Try on board first. Try on board. External antenna. External antenna. On board. You can always drill a, a hole later if needed. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so I, I was kind of dreading the drilling because that's going to take a little while, and I I can't do that on camera. So let's do that. Let's let's not do that, and let's use the um yeah let's just use the on board okay so then i have to figure out if this board is fully fried or not <laughs> i think it might be um oh well no we, we can still use the external antenna board but just put the antenna in there <laughs> that's an awesome option because I've been frying my own boards recently. So, yeah, I'm not sure which one are working right now and which ones aren't. I think they're actually in a different office or a different room. So let's, uh, I mean, this can easily go in here. Right, and then we take a Dig Uno. Do I have a Dig Uno here? I had one. Oh, it was an Ethernet version, I think. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, this is a 9 version. Uh, I need to see, because I have all kinds of prototypes lying around here. Uh, I don't remember. Mm. Let me check, let me check. Sorry about that. I need to figure this out real quick. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah. So I can use this dig uno. That's fine. And then it goes one back. That's fine too. Yeah. So let's see if we can make that height-wise. Oh, I think that's actually going to work. Yeah, and then I can wrap the module in captain tape so it won't connect anything. Nice. And uh, looking height-wise, uh, if you can see it on this camera, it barely makes it. I mean, I, if I pop it up, you can see it, but it barely, it just makes it inside. And actually the, the cap, uh, let me, the cap is just able to sit underneath that, uh, ledge. Push it down. Yeah. So that's good. That fits. Noise. Noise. Okay. So we've got the ESP figured out, and we've got figured out that we're going to use an external antenna internally. <laughs> it's made for this, right? What Linus Tech status? What? Okay. Using a sticker antenna next to the LED tape would be mo most seamless. Yeah, I don't. I I had some, but I'm not sure where I put them. So, uh, oh wait, I might. No, I'm not sure where I put them. Anyway, let's figure out this power plug first, because it has a long leg and a short leg, and I always forget. I believe the long leg is for plus, and the short leg is for minus. But normally I'd look that up. But what do you guys think? Hey, Quindorf! Quindorf? What? Finally caught you live. Super stuff, man. Already dig Unio user here because of your work. Keep it up. Thank you, Nico. Plus is inside, okay? Let me just check something here. Yeah, so tip is positive. Now let me check a power supply and see if I have a power supply with the same configuration. <clears throat> I 
Okay, so I'm not sure how many amps this project is going to use, uh, but over here, this, well, still in the packaging, this is a 5 volt 8 amp power supply, and indeed the outer shell is minus and the inner plug is plus. Um, but then how is it connected on this little thingy? 50 amp, what? No. Inside of the barrel connector, plus is inside use ohm meter. Oh yeah, we can we can just measure that. That's right. That's a good good strategy. Okay, let's put it to continuity. Uh, let's measure the outside. Okay, so the long, the long leg over here, that is the outside. I'm going to try and measure just the inside plug. Nope. Oh. Hmm. Let's hook it up like that. Yeah, so the short leg is the inside. Yeah, okay, that's good. Longest ground, yeah, got it. Okay, then we need some wire because I think I'm just going to make the internal wire first and then we'll look at the, uh, the LED strip stuff. So let me get a short piece of wire. I have those pre-cut over here. I, I suppose to. There we go. Okay, so this is some 18 gauge silicone wire, because but because we're only going to be using it from the hole to, well, maximum distance to over here, I guess. Doesn't have to be long. It uh, doesn't have to be that thick. Can you post a link for that multimeter? Uh, I think it's on my equipment page, or it's a variant of the one that's on my equipment page. You need to check that out. So anything this long so it comes here it can go all the way over the box so that should always be fine uh and then we said short was plus and long was minus now i need to figure out the way that's easiest to solder this you want me guys to zoom in uh to zoom in the camera a little bit Let's do that. You guys can see better. There we go. <clears throat> Let me make a little space here. Let me put this to the side. Okay. Put this to the side. There we go. Okay. Uh, let me snip off some points here. It says so right on the PSU. Yeah, yeah, I got it on the PSU, but uh, I needed to figure out which legs were connected to which part. So let's strip off a little bit, not too much. Okay. Then I need my soldering iron. I'm actually going to do something which might seem a little bit odd, but I'm going to put on some some glasses because I've noticed before that, especially with the flux in there and stuff like that, uh, it's it it basically hurts my eyes. <laughs> And with some protective glasses on there, well, at least I can't get any of my eyes. So. Okay. Let me turn the soldering. No, let me turn the power supply on. And then turn the soldering iron on. Safety is me one priority. Yeah, my first priority. Yeah. And um, I think, in, in my opinion, it feels like it helps me. So I'll just do it. Let's do a little trick here. 
There we go. Okay, and I have a little fan. You guys won't see the fan, but, you know. Okay. That's why you should always have suction. Yeah, right. Let's see. Nope, that's not ready yet. Uh, starting to get there. Okay. Just going to heat it up a little bit. The idea is that the, the solar kind of flows into it. And that's what we call uh, pre-tinning. Would it have been an option to use one of those little Meanwell LRS power supplies inside of it? Actually, yeah, that would have been an option for sure. That looks pretty pre-tinned to me. Um, what is the easiest way of doing that? Uh, let's uh, get some heat shrink first. Hold on, hold on, hold on. See if this is a right size heat shrink. Yeah, that should do nicely. Let's cut some off. Okay. Sorry if I'm ignoring the chat a little bit. Did you see my question before? Ah, well, maybe I didn't. Love this stuff. Had no idea you did live streams. Yeah, I like to do some live streams now and then. And now that I have a better setup for it, I like to do it more often. Uh, let's cut this heat shrink in half. And let's slide it onto the two, uh, two wires. Question earlier. I am not sure if I saw any questions. Subscribed and liked. Understandable. Hey now, I feel neglected. Sorry, Emil. Sorry about that. Let's see. Christian Madria Hansen. Did you? S Is it possible to connect a PIR sensor to WLED? I like your projects. Thank you. Uh, PIR, you mean? for on off functionality or infrared for controlling it with a little uh, little remote thingy uh, both is actually possible there on the quid led boards there is a pin uh, broken out called gpo zero and that is pulled high so it's standard high if you connect a switch or a pr sensor uh, between uh, gpo zero and ground so that it switches to ground once a connection is made using the switch or the PIR, uh, yeah, that would work. So that's it. Hope that works. Hope that explains it. One person doing work, 200 people not being productive at all. Yeah, I'm actually being producting, productive, connecting IKEA remote to home automa to automation in Home Assistant. Oh, nice. So I think I'm going to pre-tin this one also, if that's actually possible. Yeah, I think so. Okay. And then the long one was plus, right? If I remember that correctly. In theory, we should be able to melt this together. Oh. Nope. 
No, that's not doing it yet. I'm not very good at soldering connectors like this. I guess I should get a third hand or something like that, but I don't like using those. Melt into there! Let's do it! No, no, no. Okay, need to figure something out. Let me get some tape. So let's tape this down. That should prevent it from rolling a little bit. Let's add some more solder to here because that makes it easier. Okay, that's fully drabbed on there. And now let's combine this again. Try to combine this. There it goes. There it goes. See, that should be a uh, a good soldered bond. So, where you guys are from? Is it soldered or soldered? Wrong polarity. Really? Did I do it wrong? I thought long one was plus. Let's let's check again. Just to make sure. Long is ground. No! No! You'll fi fry another board like this. Oh no! Did I do it wrong? Really? I thought I had it good. Measure it later. No, we'll measure it now. That's fine. So let's strip this end. Solder, solder, long as ground. Okay, then I did it wrong. But we're going to verify that real quick because it's not like I don't believe you guys, but I might not believe you guys. So let's put this one on here. Huh, you guys are right. <laughs> okay, well, no harm done yet. See, that's why I do this with you guys there because otherwise uh, I would have blown up stuff. Take that down again and just take it off. Because contrary to what you might believe, I also blow up my share of stuff. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to connect ground to it. That's pretty easy, it should be. There we go, that should do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you watching Dr. Disrespect? So that looks like a pretty, uh, pretty solid connection to me. And we'll use the little, uh, little heat shrink to make sure it doesn't come loose and ever touch each other. So let's uh, stick this down again. <sighs> I can do plumbing very well, but don't ever ask me to do electrician work. This is what I'm trying to learn. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. We all have to learn something. Okay, let's try and pre tin this a little bit. Yep, yeah, that looks good. And then let's flow this into here. Ow, that's hot. But. I think it's on there. Let's see here. Let's 
pull on it a little bit. Well, I think that should work. What do you guys think? Right? Oh, maybe I should... Because uh, now this is kind of bigger. Can I still get the nut on there? Nice solar work. Thank you. Let's see if we can still get the nut. Uh, it's going to be tight, but it should work. It should work. Okay, let's push this in a little bit to make it easier later on. There we go. And now let's try and melt that heat shrink uh, without melting the plastic. Now, if I wanted to be careful, I could put on some, uh, some captain tape to make sure that didn't happen. But yeah, who's got time for that? Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Not too much plastic melted. That's good. <laughs> Apply force. Problem solved. Yeah, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. It's clear heat shrink, so you don't really see it. But it's impossible for it now to touch each other. That is a neat soldering job. Thank you. So let me put on this uh, nut. And see if we can still reach the plug. Because I guess they wanted me to solder it on the inside, but... Oh, man. Yeah, I'm going to have to do uh, a little bit of work here. Come on. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So it still goes on. We can make it past the, the bulge, basically. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. And, well, it's almost impossible to see, but there is actually heat shrink here. Well, you guys saw me do it, so. Okay. That is uh, soldering done, I'd say. move this away oh wink okay well i guess we can just fit it into the case while i have the camera like this so we thread this through and then we pull this through and then we take the nut and i think the nut actually has two sides eh, maybe not Okay, and then we turn it like that. Trying to show you guys. Okay, I'm not able to show you guys. Who needs a great heat gun when the lighter does the trick? Even the master plumbers you to work with the lighters. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I have a $30 heat gun, which does the trick too. So why do, would I need to get a lighter? And then the lighter's empty and, you know. So this is a bit tedious. But slowly but surely we'll get there. And it's on the inside, so who cares. Okay. Yep, that's pretty uh, pretty sturdy. Feels good. Let's see if this actually fits because we didn't test that. <laughs> if this plug is this is the correct type for this power supply plug. Well, it's, it's a tight fit, but it fits. 
I guess a tight fit's good. Do we want to see if we have power? I guess so, huh? Uh, let me get a power cord. I tested before continuing. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. Let me uh, first fix these cables because otherwise we're just going to have a short. That's what she said, right? Well, I'm hoping that's not what she says right now because then she'll figure it out. I'm trying to keep this a secret, guys, for Valentine. Because, uh, you know, I'm so romantic. <laughs> Okay, so I've got some wire ferrules, and if you've been uh, following my channel for a little while, you know I use wire ferrules on everything. Okay. And you want to have the wires kind of just stick out like that, and or just not somewhere very close to that. And then you put it in the crimper, you crimp it down, that's it. And now we have two non-stranded wires. Did you see Dave Plummer LED effects on ESP32? Is it possible to make something similar in WLED? I did not, so I do not know. Okay, so we have the two wires and they're not sticking together, so that's good. Let's take the power supply plug. And I did prepare a socket on my table here. Uh, let's turn it on, see if it explodes. No explosions yet. That's good. Let's do a little measurement. So we have negative and positive, and that is uh, hard to do. Yeah, well, it's fluctuating because I'm not making a great connection. So let me let me try and figure that out. Okay, like that and like that. Five point four volts. That's pretty high. Wow. Okay. But that should be okay. That's fine. It probably lower a little bit once. Um... Yeah. So this works. That's good. Nice. Step one done. Test it with your tongue. Ah, uh, it's not a nine volt battery, there, uh, Eddie. Do you have issues of wire ferrules falling off? The pliers I got with your recommendations don't seem to crimp very well. Well. Um, on the crimping, um, there should be a little thingy like this, and uh, if you undo the screw, I think you can actually tension it to a different tension, because if you look at the wire ferrules here, uh, well, I can actually, uh, I can tug on them pretty uh, solidly, yeah, even with my nail, that's not coming off, so... Um, not sure what's going wrong then, but you might need to uh, set your crimper a bit tighter, maybe. Happy birthday, says Leave it, leave it Daniel. Aww. I couldn't spend my money on your camp shop workshop this year. Spend it wisely. I will. I will buy more stuff. <laughs> to show you guys, of course. What do you think? Okay, so we, now we have the little box. Um... Yeah, I guess we can take the Dig Uno, put it in there, uh, but first we're, first we're going to do a little trick, because I'm sure you've all been there, um, trying to get these wires into the terminals, I mean, you can do it, but it's very hard, as you can see, they don't really want to go in, but it's kind of a square or rectangle hole versus a round little plug. I know it's not in focus, but I can't really reach it. Well, let me see if this helps. Yeah. Oh, maybe it did. Nice. So, square hole versus round plug. So, 
what I generally do, and I'm not, I, I know all electricians on the world are now going to kill me, I flatten the plug. In my opinion, it still makes a perfect good bond, but now it goes into the terminals easily. See how, see how much difference that makes? These pliers don't have a wheel. Oh, um, well, then it's going to be more difficult. Then I don't know what to do, really. Grounding is, you're doing it wrong, TM. Well, I'm doing it the way it works, TM. <laughs> I twist those cables when power also, uh, power 12 volt, okay. It would be flattened when tightened the screws anyways. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I just wiggle the wire until it fits using the pliers. Okay, sure. You're a genius. <laughs> well, I mean, now they just fit so easily. Come on. It's, it's just, you know. And this is 18 gauge. And 16 gauge will work just as fine. Uh, beyond that, these terminals might be a bit too small. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have our little plug. And we have our dig uno. Um... Let's get some kind of fuse on here. Let's uh, steal it from this, this, uh, this, oh, you're getting a spoiler again. This dig quad prototype, which needs no jumpers and has this interesting circuit on the back, which does all kinds of stuff. But yeah, let's steal a, steal a fuse from there. Put it in. So, we can't really put this on here because that'll short out for sure, right? I never understood why gauge goes from low to high. Yeah, I'm not sure either. <laughs> so I have something called captain tape. I'll show you over here. It's this metallic looking tape, but it's perfect for insulation uh, purposes and stuff like that. So let's put it all over the Quinn LED Dig Uno. Because with the 5 amps or something like that we're going to run, it's not going to get that hot. That's fine. Auto voltage sensing 5 to 24 volt Quinn LED quad. You got that right. You caught that quickly. Yes, that is what I'm trying to make. And the latest prototypes are finally starting to look like I want them to. So I'm hoping to release that at some point. But... And this is the butt that is going to be uh, pre-assembled only because it's using a lot of SMD components. And well, I'm not going to ask anyone to do that at home. It'll be a support nightmare. Uh, let's see. Oh, the jumper is actually wrong. This needs to be on 5 volt. There we go. I almost forgot to set my own power jumper. But yeah, uh, there should be a dig quad somewhere in the future where there is no more jumpers or stuff to set, but pre-assembled only. Captain tape is heat resisting. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's good to use in, in, in electrical stuff because it's very insulating and uh, heat resistant and stuff like that. And since we use an external antenna, that should be fine. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, oh, that focus is like all gone. You can do it, camera. No, you cannot do it. Nope. Sorry. Let's see if I can reach the button. Almost. There we go. Nice. Okay, more tape. More tape. Oh, okay. I used to play with model trains and even touching the rails bothered me. I'm super careful when it comes to electricity. I dislike that feeling very much. Yeah, I can, uh, I can understand that. But this... Uh, We'll cut a hole there. I also want well insulated so that it's basically impossible for it to uh, to touch something. 
sorry. So I just made a little cut here for the terminals. I'm just going to wrap it in tape. <laughs> and normally you couldn't do this, but because this is uh, the external antenna version, uh, well, that should actually be fine. Okay, and this can go over here. No, just a little bit more. Heat dissipation, well, we're not going to run a lot of amps through here. Um, so I imagine it'll be fine. I guess I could use less tape. Uh, might be going a bit overboard here, but... Mm. No. Oh, oh, sorry about that. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I'm always worried about the pins poking through. Yeah, I get that. But uh, with this captain tape, I actually haven't had an issue with that before. So... That, but that, that is why I'm putting on multiple layers uh, to try and prevent that. And I just want to try and prevent it having a short in what for form or whatever. But with only a few amps on through there, and I'll keep this part open, so there will be some slight ventilation, I guess, in there. It should be okay. He will have to unwrap it again. Why? What a beautifully wrapped Valentine's Day gift. <laughs> Just gift her to Uno. Well done wrapping. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So let's screw in the... Oh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> I didn't screw in the power wires. Damn it! Uh, can't reach the LED strip connectors anymore. Yeah. Sorry. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking, guys. Sorry. Oh, how stupid. Okay, maybe I can just punch a hole through here. Yep. <laughs> okay, so this has to be plus. Wait, I thought I didn't tape over this. Oh, that's odd. I guess I did in a second layer. Yeah, we said it. Yeah, sorry about that. We'll fix it. There we go. That should do. Okay, so plus wire. I get some questions sometimes like, oh, that's not gone right. Holy shit. I guess this was a bit of a broken terminal. Hmm. Well, it's good that it's going to be in here. Kind of broke the side of the terminal. Can you see that? <laughs> Oops. Never had that happen before. But it's in there. Let's not get it out anymore. Wow. Okay. I guess my uh, terminals I have are a bit crappy. Okay. But you're right. How am I going to get to the ones under the Dig Uno? Oh, I'm so stupid. Oh. Wonder when he'll figure it out. Well, I think I just did. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. So now you guys know it's real. <laughs> Where is my... This. I need this. This is going to be the LED strip tube video all over again. Nah, we're already doing much better than that. Let's see here. I think I can, oh, wait. If I just cut it. Like that. See, if you make a lot of stupid mistakes, you have to be very pragmatic in, uh, Solving your mistakes, I guess. Okay. <laughs> oh no, it went out of focus right when I fixed it. Okay, let me fix that focus. Because that's annoying. Nope, 
that's not the right button. There we go. Manual focus, baby. Old age is getting to him. So yeah, I just cut a slit and now we should be able to uh, take it off. There we go. Ha! I fixed it. Use manual focus. Yeah, it's on manual focus now. Okay, so this is already actually also a prototype, but uh, we're not going to talk about that. Um, I guess we'll have to fix the LED wires at some point, huh? So first, let's see if this one actually comes online. Um... Let's see, we have that wire nut it needs to go through, and I think we won't be able to use this uh, this little connector anymore. But now, I do not remember where I put it. What the? Where did I put it? Arr. Well, that's a problem. Next board update, make use of banana plugs just to prevent this from happening. Yeah, <laughs> it's inside the lamp. Solder everything. Yeah, yeah. But, um... Ah, I screwed it back in here. Okay, that's right. Yeah, because this plug isn't going to fit through this... Yeah, uh, I don't know how you call that any it's nut, I guess. Let me put this away before I cut myself. So, this needs to come off. Snip. And now it should fit through just fine. Let's hope I cut off the right side. I don't actually remember. Oh, no. Because, of course, it has two sides. I'm starting to lose attention, people. You have to keep me, keep me focused. I do not remember which is the data in direction. I'm actually thinking it's this side. What do you guys think? I was watching the live <laughs> at one and a half speed and back to live. Nice. This is fun life, yeah. You can just use a small cable for the front of the connector to disconnect cables. You can, yeah, well, I'm not going to uh, find the error. There's no uh, there's no error on this type of LED strip. Just guess. No, no, we're not going to guess. We're going to snip this side off too because, well... Alright, who cares? Yeah, no need for the plug, just screw in the wires. That, I agree with that. Um, I think this one has the data side. So let's just hook it up real quick. 50% chances. Should be the one with power injection. Actually, I think it should be the one without power injection. But you never know how the Chinese think. Because I would think the side with the power injection would be the end side and then the side without the power injection uh, would be the starting side because you already have plus and minus wires there but it all depends on how you think about that wow this uh, lead became pretty short but we'll see we'll see We can always attach new leads, that's fine. Damn it. See, that's why I don't like stranded cable. The end with the pin, the end with the pins is the end. What? What pins? Okay, 
and if people are paying attention they'll actually see that there's no more L1D and L1C on there but actually LED1 and LED2 yeah I'm just why why wouldn't it close since this was a prototype I was building, I think I re used really horrible components. Mm. <laughs> Why though? Uh. It's just for a test, come on. Yeah, this sucks. Okay, I'm just gonna put ferrules on it, even though I don't know if I'm going to use this side in the end. Okay, I'm not gonna put ferrules on it, but I'll twist them like that. Should give it a little bit more grip. Yeah, strip long and then double it. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. That's why I put ferrules on everything. Because I hate this. Otherwise, tin them. Yeah, yeah, but then I can just use ferrules. That should give a better fit. Yeah, so I'm moving away from the L1D and L1C to uh, basically LED1 and LED2 because I think going forward that's going to make more sense. I usually swear a lot when that happens. My family runs away. Okay, so far so good. I think this will hold. Okay, okay, don't touch it. Let's put this on here. Uh, these two weren't actually made to go together, but I'll make it fit. There we go. <laughs> okay, power supply plug. And uh, let's. Uh, there should be WLED on there because, as I said, we're not going to be able to use the USB port. So this will be. Uh, I just ordered twenty Dig Udo PCBs while watching. Nice. Um, so this should be OTA only from now on, or I have to actually like uh, this component over here. I'll have to resolder that. And yeah, uh, let's turn it on. See what happens. Okay, I see LEDs. You guys barely can see any LEDs. Can you see on here? It was configured for RGBW probably. Let me um, get my phone. When is XGeeks in Canada going to get a resupply of Planet of the Quad? Well, actually they should have gotten one by now, but we've been running into production problems. We've actually the d1 minis we're using right now uh so that is a problem um hold on nice we have orange light and we need to set it to like i don't know 500 leds yep orange light confirmed so um, we're trying to make a shipment for X Geeks, but we're currently really delayed on that. And I'm hoping to fix that next week. Uh, but worst case, we won't be able to make it. And Dr. Z's, we did do a shipment. It was lower than we wanted it to be. Uh, but he should get those soon. But yeah, so this is the data side. Okay. The orange light of love. Okay, so far so good. 
Let's disconnect that. Let's disconnect that. And uh, now we need to unscrew it again. Because I am for sure not going to keep it like this. So now that I know this is the right side, I am for sure going to put some wire ferrules on there. Okay. Um, okay, let's try and fix this. There's always debate if you should twist them before putting them in the ferrules or not. I find that it makes it easier to go into the ferrules and as you saw before, I do not have any connection issues. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure this actually... Oh, okay, it did go in. Okay. Are those wires long enough to put inside of the case? Yeah, they're a bit on the short side, but we're going to have to see. Because otherwise I'll have to do some more work in soldering new leads to it. And if I don't have to, I'd rather not. Okay, so crimping them. There we go. Put those out of the way. First, through the hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Um, so this is the underside. So it would go through here with the nut. So this, let's just put that in place, I guess. Um, let me put a little bit of tape on there. I'll steal my tape of earlier. No. Whatever. This needs to stick. There we go. Okay. So, in theory, these go in here. Maybe not all at the same time. Okay, the tape was a stupid idea. Okay, two made it through. Now I just have to push the third one through. Yes. Okay, well, it can go in pretty far like that. Uh, but we'll have to... No, no top nut? No, because... No, um, this thing actually has thread inside of it. And I'm not sure how I can show you. So, how would that work? Wait, so... Let's try and reassemble that. See how that will work. So, let's remove this again. Let's... <laughs> it really can't fit through with all three at the same time. Uh, so, um... let's get one back first. Oh, no, it doesn't fit that way. Okay. 
Okay, okay, okay. Oh, so basically this goes in here. Like that. And then you thread it through here. And then you put on the nut. Oh, sorry. This is a nice puzzle game in these boring times, yeah. Of course, the nut doesn't want to go on right now. Okay. Don't forget about the weight. Yeah, but I... Uh, oh, I was thinking I could actually unscrew it and then put on the weight last, but I probably can't. Because then... Did you ban YouTube from your home network so Sandra doesn't watch this stream by accident? Uh, actually, no. So we're just not going to talk about that. Okay, let's put it down. There we go. And then, in the end... Uh, I guess you guys can't see. The cables will go through there like that. And that actually should line up pretty nicely um, with how far it goes in. Um, I'm thinking we should put the weight on there. Uh, and I'm thinking you guys can't see any of this. Um, let's re-enable USB cam. There we go. So let's Ah, damn it. Undo the knot. No. Don't forget the weight. Yeah, let's put on the let's put the weight on there. Uh, yeah, it can only go like that. Ha 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 ha! You guys seeing that? Not very nice, not very well. Let me just... So that fits perfectly. Now let's put on the nut. Oh, come on. Let's go on there. Um, Andy, um, because, well, she told me when she saw this LED strip that she really liked it. Uh, so that's one part of it. And the other, I think it'll give the nicest effect, basically. Okay, so let's see. I keep it straight, and then I tighten the nut. Okay. That's almost straight. Yeah, good enough. Okay. Oh, of course, now I have to find a spot for the Dig Uno. Because, uh, well, there's a weight in there now. But eh, I can go here. Or something like that. In the end. Let's put it upright. Okay, that still works. And then we're going to be feeding the cable. Hum, hum, K. Why is that blocked? Hey, Quindor, my brother got a few HP Proker switches tonight. I don't know what types, but it's like 48 ports ones and with a few multiple, okay, insertable cards. Okay. I really like your streaming setup. I need to up my game. This is great to watch in the background while I'm having, while I'm writing code and wishing I could do what you're doing. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Okay, so now we're going to try and feed this through. Uh, I guess that works. Maybe not. Yeah, those are mostly through. And then we feed the third cable. Come on. You can do it. Uh, almost. 
Third cable, come on. There we go. Let's twist that so that it's straight in the base. And this is the amount of wires we have, damn it. <laughs> That's not going to be long enough, is it? Yeah, it, actually it should be at intermit.tech, but then suddenly the message gets lost somehow. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay, so... Um, these wires are not long enough. Damn it. Now we could do two things. We could resolder the LED strip. But I kind of don't want to do that because, well, they're very fragile connections to begin with. Uh, so I'm thinking I'm going to take the wire ferrules off and I'm going to use some butt splices. Have you seen those before? But before I do that, let's see if we can uh, wrangle the LED strip in here, basically. So we know that part is okay. Oh, don't touch the keyboard. Yeah, so far so good. I'm kind of worried about running this LED strip without any power injection. But I guess if we limit the amount of power, it should be okay. Okay, made it to the end. Yeah, that actually goes in there pretty nicely. Uh, I guess I'll show you on here again. So, yeah, LED strip is in there. And uh, that fits pretty nicely. Yeah, I like that. So, we're not going to cut it just yet. Because we're going to make sure we can hook it up inside. So we now know the external part will work. I'll put a little tape on that. Just to make sure it stays put. And then we'll test it because... I don't remember from testing in the video. But I think 2 meters of this stuff will actually use about 60 watts. And that might actually be too much. But it all depends on the brightness we can actually achieve. Because we're not going to do full white. If we wanted white, we could have kept the strip that was uh, in there. Okay, so this is excess, but that's fine. Um, so let's work on the inside. Hey, at Intermittech, Emil barked because he's logged in as Intermittech, possibly. Yeah, but we noticed last time, that's why you became an admin, uh, Johnny, that even though people would do at Intermittech, I still wouldn't see it. No, solder the wires and heat shrink. Well, what ferrule profile has your preference? Square or hexagonal? Hexagonal. Because then I can, can squish it to uh, rectangular a little bit. <laughs> well, I guess you could with square too. I just like the rectangular. Uh, it seems to me that it holds the wires slightly better. So, yeah. I'm fixing my train models whilst watching this. Who will finish first? Well, I'm not known for doing short live streams. We're, we've already been going one hour and 44 minutes. But yeah, let's finish a project. I mean, let's do a real project. I like doing real projects. So let's see if I can get these ferrules off. I don't think so. No. Oh, damn it. I'll have to cut them. Okay, so we have to cut those. Now we have to strip them again. Let's first twist them. Yeah, I'm running out of wire, that's for sure. Well, worst case, I can um, solder them I can solder new wires to the LED strip, but I'd rather not. Um, so we're trying this. Um. I'm really running out of wire here. 
But let's make it work. Let's make it work. Sorry, Quinner. Have to go. Happy birthday. Bye, Johnny. No problem. Okay, so let me get those butt splices I've been talking about. Hold on. What did I miss? Not much. Well, we've been working. Uh, let's see. I take over as mod. Actually, that's a fine idea. Let's see if I can. We can do that. At moderator. There we go. You should now be moderator. So this is a little kit with uh, butt splices as they're called. And they're basically little tubes with solder in the middle and then some glue here and on the other side. So if you twist the wires, put it in there and then heat it up, it makes a nicely soldered connection. All the power. Well, don't abuse the power. I can take it away again. That's how it works. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is going to be a challenge. Actually, why am I doing so difficult? I'm just going to take the LED strip out again. There we go. We took the LED strip out. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, I'll have to do it like that. Okay. Uh, so we have the wires here. They won't fit in the weight. Will be difficult. No, I think it's okay. What? Is it your birthday? Congratulations. Thank you very much. No, they won't fit back in. Uh, you think so? Hmm. Might have a point there, but once I have longer wires, um, I will be able to put the butt splices in through one at a time. And then I don't think it's going to be a problem. Soldering new wires on actually made a difference in the amount of wattage readout for, for me on another strip. The stranded wires are actually quite thin, I guess. Uh, okay, okay, okay. You guys convinced me. Let's take this heat shrink off. Let's solder new wires. Let's see how the current ones are done. Oh, wow, okay. This just slides off. <laughs> well, that's crappy heat shrink. Okay, let's see how they did it, because I think they soldered it to the back. You guys convinced me. Let's just put new wires on. Okay, this is taking the adhesive off too, but we'll fix that later. That's some tiny solder joints there, but we can do that. We can do that. That's no problem. Okay, so butt, butt splice plan cancelled. You guys convinced me. Let's do it right. It's often best to just do it right. Get that. Okay, uh, let's tape this down so you can see it. Tape is your friend while soldering. To keep stuff from moving around. <laughs> I 
get your fancy new microscope for this. Nah, I don't need a microscope for that. I turned 42, not 78 or whatever. <laughs> okay, let's get the soldering iron. Let's uh, give you a slight little USB view too. There we go. Uh, I need to get some heat shrink and some cable. I actually did understand the butt spice as well. Yeah, they're easy to use. And uh, if the cable would have been slightly longer, I think that would have worked fine. But let's do this. So I have this cable here. It's, of course, way too long. So let's snip that in half. Uh, let's measure first. So now, yeah, okay, we can easily snip that in half. That should be fine. Something like that. Okay. And then we need a data cable that is just as long. Because you're right, because I was already worried about having a single injection point uh, for this pretty long strip. So adding some better, thicker cable myself, that's actually a pretty good idea. So, yeah. Okay, let's put that over there. Ooh. Okay, well, same deal. We uh, strip off only a tiny bit on this side where we're going to solder it. Cut later. Yeah, well, this should be fine. If you don't have an automatic wire stripper, get one. It's, it, it saves your teeth, it saves your nails, it gets you better cuts, it saves you a lot of frustration. They're awesome. Where did you buy those LED wire in bulk? Uh, just on AliExpress. I think I have some of it listed uh, on the tools and equipment page. Um, need more tape. <laughs> your teeth well I don't use my teeth but I've seen people do that you did that with your teeth no well at some point maybe I'm not gonna divulge yet so let's uh, oh, it's stray wires okay let's tin this a little bit There we go. Only use your teeth on a powered wire. Yeah, right. Okay, then next step is let's desolder these wires. Pascal Lum, one C dollar. I'm not sure what a C dollar is, but thank you anyway. Thank you, Pascal. Thanks. Continue your amazing job. You're truly a difference in the LED community. Thank you. I tried to do my part. So let's take these wires off. Make sure to heat the pads before pooling, because otherwise you'll pull the pad off. 
let's add a little bit of solar so there's a bit of flux in there okay that should give us good points to connect to yeah once stripped telephone wire with my teeth i had a forced smile when the other lead touched my cheek yeah i can imagine telephone wire has a lot of voltage on it okay now I didn't pay attention, but data generally is in the middle. Uh, so let's solder that first. I can put on the heat shrink later. Okay, that should be a good connection. So that's the trick when soldering this stuff. You tin one side, you tin the other side, and then you flow those sides together. That's basically the trick when soldering leads. Uh, did anyone pay attention what the plus and minus wires <laughs> were? Because I didn't. Oh, no. Oh, 5 volt ground. So 5 volt is over here. Okay. That's fine. No, it should be okay. <laughs> Okay, that should be okay, it's not touching, that's good, and then let's solder this one. Ow, that started to hurt. Stay down. Yep, that should be it. Ow. <laughs> okay, let's do a little tuck test. That's fine. That is fine. And that is fine. Yep, I got it. Uh, so let's get a little bit of heat shrink. Let's get a good amount. There we go. Uh, it's not the best soldering I've ever done because the plus is very close to um, the data wire don't like it uh, so let me try and roll that over a little bit Oh, that's a bit too much. Okay. Put double-sided tape first down, no? No, I know that won't jump, but now it's just slightly further away so that if the heat shrink basically crushes the strip a little bit, it should still be fine. What do I need double-sided tape first for? What? Because I can just slide this over. And then uh, heat shrink it. Going for perfection. Now it will be screwed. Oh yeah, I've, I've had those days. That's for sure. <laughs> okay, let's hot air that a little bit. The double tape. Ooh. Oh, you mean this bit? Uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll put that over uh, the heat shrink, not under it. We'll hold the double-sided tape in place. Uh, yeah, but then I won't be able to peel it anymore. No, I'll just put it over it. Okay, let's uh, heat this a little bit so that it shrinks.
Sorry. have this problem that when I make solder joints I want to make them too big and then when I do the heat shrink I don't want them to stick too far on the LED strip because then it'll be hiding LEDs but now I can do it like that and that means the double-sided tape will still insulate the maybe slightly exposed exposed joints I love watching the heat shrink tube shrink. Yeah, I do too. That's awesome. Okay, so let's put it away. Okay, new leads fixed. Now, should we test it or should we assume it works? <laughs> I'm just going to prepare the cables while I wait for the chat to decide if we're just going to YOLO and not test anything or uh, test it. Well, I need to hook it up anyway. That's uh, so well, we'll test it before sticking the strip down, basically. Assume mothers and such. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It will only break if you don't test it first. YOLO! Yeah, uh, we'll, uh, we'll test it. So I have one of these here. That should fit the data wire. And then I need more ferrules. See, that's why I have a bunch of 18 gauge lying around. Oh, wait, all your comments are being hidden. There we go. <laughs> Because uh, 18 gauge for me is just a very easy wire size I can use in a lot of projects. So let's crimp this one. There we go. The wire is kind of sticking past the ferrule here. That's no problem. That's fine. Means it certainly has a lot of surface area. Don't assume anything. That is often a very good and safe choice. Okay, let's crimp those on. Well, if this all works, we might actually get this done today. Before it's tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, Rerun. Oh, there we go. Okay, and let's uh, crush these a little bit so they fit into the terminals better. I'm showing you guys all my tricks. Oh, well, they're not secret, so. <laughs> okay, now we need, just need to get these wires through that uh, wire hole. Yeah, thanks, uh, Andy. Let me check something real quick. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's... Oh, no. The big uno fell out. Okay, let's put this LED strip back because I pulled it out. Okay, let's first thread this wire through. Oh, I actually can't see it. Okay, there we go.
trying to get that flimsy green wire through first doesn't seem to want to go there we go okay now these two should fit through pretty easily nope okay, let's pull them apart oh no pulled the green wire through again oh okay Second one made it through. Yes. Okay, we've got all three wires. Uh, okay, let's pull the heat shrink kind of into it too, because otherwise we'll have the heat shrink sticking out. Well, it seems to be the most it will go in. Okay. So let's thread this in again, somewhat. Mm. Well, I made a mess of this. <laughs> okay, let's just do it like that. There we go. Okay, we'll tight. We'll we'll uh, lock this down once uh, we're sure it's right. So now our wires are actually this exactly the same length as the power wire, right? A hey. cool, Mister Agni. Intermit Tech will be happy. What? We'll order one of those. Oh yeah, the wire strippers. Yeah. Thanks for all the affiliate stuff, by the way. That's always very much appreciated. Although, it seems a small amount, it actually helps. Okay, let's wire that up. We have plus. We have some minus. And then we have LED1. Screw that in. Sorry, I have to hold it so you can see. But okay, so uh, we have minus data into LED1, which used to be L1D, and then we have plus, right? And let's see, let's put the module on there. Okay, module is on. Shall we do another test? I think we should do another test, right? See if all the wires connected. So let's put it like that. Okay, plug it in. This looks correct. Intimate tech. Philip and me just want to test how it looks and what happens if you put a user on timeout. So don't be worried. Okay, that's fine. You can do that. Oh no, he's timed out for 300 seconds. Sorry, Philip. <laughs> After WLED orange, what is the first effect you're going to test with it? I don't know yet. I think we're going to wait until we have the actual sleeving on, on there too. So this looks all correct and wired up, I think. Let's turn it on. Yep. I see orange. Uh, this, this one boots up at a very low setting because I was playing with it before. He's 42 and now he needs them. Yeah. So let's give it more power, give it a little different color, red or blue or green. Yep, that's looking good. Cool. Okay, so let's finish it off before we actually do testing. Pink! <laughs> yeah. Okay, turn it off. Okay, so that's all good. This is wired in. So now I can uh, close my little flap I made earlier because I was stupid. That's 
fine. I guess I'll add a little bit on top of it. Don't you just hate when that happens? When, like, part of the tape curls up, but the other part doesn't? And then you have to kind of... Oh, it's the other way around. And, uh. Nice. I got it. So I'm just going to wrap it again because, hey, it's wrapping time. There's no way there's any electricity going to short in here. Don't show your credit cards. Oh, they're actually my bank cards, but it's okay. Don't worry about it. I guess my name is on there, but by now, uh, I think the information is out there anyway. Okay. So oh, let's disconnect this, although the power is off. Um... So, now we have to figure out how we're going to put this in here. Let me show you guys. Um, yeah, I was thinking of just... Uh, hold on, let me see what I can do here. Yeah, that will work. see what's best to do with the antenna can the antenna fit here no maybe if I wrote this to rotate this slightly no hmm okay, let's put the cable under here huh I don't actually know where to put the antenna. We can bend it. <laughs> Look at that! We can bend it and then put it like that. Yeah, that's an idea. Okay. Now, I'm not going to strap that down with captain tape because that would actually inhibit the signal, I think. Not sure. Don't know. Uh, but let's do it like that. So much tape in this project, right? Okay, I need to rip this off. Oh. Okay, that didn't work at all. Keep thinking Captain Tape, but it's Captain Tape. Yeah, that's right. Not as much as that giant metal frame. Yeah, I'm not sure about the giant metal frame either, but we'll uh, we'll see. I might have to tighten that nut a little bit more later. Um, so yeah, now it's in there like this. Uh, that might not be ideal. I don't know. Um, but we're going to see. Right? Uh, currently, the Dig Uno is like jammed in here so that's not going anywhere and these wires they can go beneath here uh, let me put a little bit of tape on that so you can tape it to the ballast or to the weight okay so now those cables won't be going anywhere I'll, I'll tape down the power cables too there are two types of people in this world. To those with hot glue and those with fingerprints. Yeah. And those who just use a lot of tape. Uh, this is uh, paper tape, but it'll be fine for this purpose, I think. Hey, Philip is back. <laughs> you survived your three and a second timeout. Nice. Okay. So now, it looks like this. Let me clean this up slightly. So, we need to put this in here and see 
how much actually goes in. I guess I'll need to unwrap this tape here first. Although I guess at some point we're going to stick it down. Although I'm thinking if the diffusion layer is going on there anyway, if I can just stick down the end part, that might actually be enough. And then if the effect isn't nice, I could still replace it for another type of uh, LED. But So let's stick this down again. So now the LED strip is like, well, basically like it would be in there. Maybe this corner would, well, this corner would be tighter. Uh, so there's a corner here that would be tighter if it would be glued down. Checked to start LEDs with the adjustment you've just pulled some out. Yeah, yeah, but this light is brought to you by tape. Let's turn it on again. Let's give you a bit of view. Uh, okay, turn it on. There we go. Let's see how many LEDs that is. Currently, we have set 500 LEDs, and we're not reaching. We're not reaching the end here. So let's set 700, 600. Nope. Uh, 700. That should be working. Why isn't that working? Hmm. Let's disable the power limiter. No, it's not it either. How interesting. Uh, are they broken somehow? So we're reaching up until about here. Let's go back. LEDs, 400. Let's change color. Okay, so this was already 400. 300. Oh, I think I know what's going on. Yeah, let's go to 250. I might need to firmware flash this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I used this board in some uh, multi-output testing, and um, it's flashed with a firmware that has a limit of 300 per output channel. Right, so I'm just going to go on my phone, and I'll show you how to OTA flash. How's that? So let's go to this camera. And let's first go to the browser. WLED. Okay, so we're in the WLED wiki. And uh, I always forget where it is on mobile. But we need to go to releases. Okay, I'm going to ask for the desktop site because I never know where the releases are. Because over here, there is just a releases thingy. See, that releases, okay. Okay, and then since we're using an ESP32, we need the WLED ESP32 LED pin 16. Okay, that's been downloaded. Andreas Fronson is here. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to WLED, config, security and updates, and then we do a manual OTA. Choose file. Uh, okay, there's 11.1 .1 ESP32 LED pin 16. Yeah, LED pin 16. Okay, and let's update. Okay, LEDs went all crazy. Well, let's wait for it to update. Should update. As long as it has a good signal, I guess.
And there we go. And now, if we look at the USB cam again, for some reason they're all on. I'm not sure why. Uh, but let's reboot the mod. Yeah, let's. Uh, I'm gonna power it off real quick to reset the LEDs, basically. Releases in the mobile versions are all the way at the bottom. Oh, okay. Okay, that turned on. So now let's uh, let's turn it up a little bit. Yep, yeah, now it's visible. And now let's set the amount of LEDs so that we can reach over here. So it's now at 250, so let's go to 400. Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, but it's not beyond the tape yet, so let's go to 450. That's way too much. Uh, let's go to 410. Yeah, but then I have to change color because otherwise I can't see the difference. Okay, let's go to 413. Uh, 415. Something like that, but we'll figure that out once we actually glue it in there. 410, yeah, <laughs> you guessed it. Well, 415 right now. Okay, so let's see how you guys can see best. I guess like that. Um, okay. I'll have to reset them again to get these to turn off. It's the easiest way. There we go. Okay, brightness is pretty good. So, do we want to see an effect? Uh, let's do... I like the, the paletti effect. The palette effect. Palette. Let's turn it up in brightness. That looks pretty. Of course, it doesn't show on camera. Maybe on this camera it shows better. Yeah, I need to do some special stuff normally to film LEDs. But it's working. And it's in there. That's good. Place to start into the base and then secure it in the strip and after the, the cut. I'm not sure what you mean. Noise 3. It looks really fluid with the uh, with the amount of LEDs in this thing. That is pretty cool. So, do we want to glue it down, or do we want to try the diffuser? What do you guys think, chat? Do we want oh put the diffuser on? I guess that answer that. Okay, let me let me try and put the diffuser on just like it is right now. Let's see how easy that is. I think it's pretty easy. Cause... Glue it! <laughs> now I'm gonna put the diffuser on first because I haven't fully committed to this LED strip yet. Although I think it'll look great. Not 100% certain yet. So I'm just going to do a small part of it. I need to tighten that nut still. Come on. Get it to stay in the corner basically but I can show you the effect nope oh I'm just gonna hold it there and put it over the top that way it should be easier no
doesn't want to stay in there. Well, that corner is a tricky part. Okay, I think I got it. So let me do this part real quick. Okay. Good enough to see the effect, right? And I think that looks pretty good. Uh, it dimmed it a little, a little bit, but I'm not sure how bright I set it. I can still go a lot brighter. Okay. Let's do another effect, like uh, Pacifica. Yeah, then I need to dim it down, actually, for you guys to see. I think that definition is actually pretty good still. Certainly impossible to see an individual LED. Let's do... Um, What's it called? Popcorn? Yeah, so you can see the individual LEDs. I think that looks great. The original was from AliExpress. The links are in the description. Yeah, that looks pretty good. What do you guys think? So this is a part where there is no diffuser. And this is a part where there is a diffuser. And yeah, maybe there's a little bit... There's a little bit of uh, sticky tape here. Maybe there's a little bit definition over here. Uh, hold on. Come on. Okay, can't get it. Uh, okay, whatever. Maybe there's a little bit more definition over here. But I don't think it's lost on the diffuser, really. I think that looks great. Railway? Uh, no. Let's see, rain? No. Uh, rainbow? Yeah. So this is the running effect? Yeah. Looks great. Nate UK, three pounds. Thank you. And thanks for the thumbs up. Thank you very much. I think that looks awesome. Trying to find a nice effect. Yeah. Breathe effect. Breathe effect. Okay, let's do breathe. Uh, where is it? Probably at the B. Oh, well, no. Sorry, I'm doing fireworks first. Fireworks 1D. Yeah, so the diffuser does diffuse the dot a little bit. But I think the overall effect is still pretty good. Not sure how much better it is versus having like the 144 LEDs a meter in there, but it's perfectly diffused this way at least. And you can still see the dot. That's pretty good. Yeah, it looks great. Starburst. And I mean, yeah, it looks great here too, but... I don't think the diffuser hurts it that much, actually. But I am thinking uh, I will cut it to length. Try the glitter effect. Okay, glitter. Yeah, I need to turn it down, otherwise you can't see it on camera. Turn it down more. That's too much. Yeah, that's glitter. Somebody said breathe. And then set it to pink. Yep, 
Yeah, it's hard to do that on camera. Because if I do it full power, well, you can see on my other camera that it's actually pretty bright. Yeah, that's nice. And the voltage drop is actually, yeah, not that noticeable at least. Need to get some of that 664 LEDs per meter strip. What? Okay, let's turn it down a little bit. BPM. Bouncing balls. Yeah, so uh, decision time. This works beautifully. Um, do you want... Should we stick it down or just put the diffuser on there so that maybe at some point I could replace it for a lower density LED strip? I don't know. I don't think I'll keep it like this, actually. We're just going to stick it down. You see more dots without the diffuser. With the diffuser, it's better looking. Yeah, washing machine effect. Well, I just turned it off. Well, let me let me finish this up. So let me take this off again. And then let's actually stick it down. Stick it to the man. Okay. Send it. Um, now, how do I get to the gluey part of the tape? I'll have to pry this out somewhere. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll get it out of there. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, and then we need to get this... I really don't like this blue style of, um... Hey, my USB camera seems to be uh, kind of uh, not functional. What's going on there? Nope. I'm going to try and deactivate it and then activate it again. Oh, there we go, okay. USB cam froze. Yeah, I don't really like this blue type of um, sticky tape they do nowadays because it's really thin, so it sucks to get it started. Exacto blade under the corner to start the peel. That is actually a great idea. Uh, where did oh there we go? This is my exacto knife. That is actually a really great idea. Come on. Oh, getting it, getting it. Yes. Okay, because it's just a start. And once it's started, it's fine. Uh, I am actually going to get a little bit of that red tape. Uh, I'll be right back. Yeah, so I am going to be using a little bit of this tape. Uh, this is much thicker, so it's easier to work with. And it really sticks really well. Um, and I'll uh, use it for the part of the heat shrink going to the LED strip. So that I'll know I'll get a good adhesion there too. Oh yeah, I got my glasses on still. 
I didn't notice. Okay, got that started. Damn it. Yeah, that should make a pretty tight base. So now it's just threading the strip to. Let's turn. Let's take these glasses off. So I need to make sure I uh, put it down in the bend really well. Uh, let me turn this a bit. So now we've turned a already slightly expensive lamp into, into an even more expensive lamp with this very expensive LED strip inside. But it does look awesome. And we've added a Quinn LED Dig Uno and a power supply. <laughs> yeah, this isn't really the most cost effective lamp anymore. Just trying to get it all to stick down. No pieces that stand out. Will you sync your videos to Odyssey aka Library? Uh, I've been watching uh, Dave Jones from the EV Lab about that and he makes some good points but I don't know I also get uh, ad revenue from YouTube so I'd be missing that. Uh, but I have been looking into uh, alternative ways to that because I'm not ready to share too much about it yet. But there might be a few changes coming uh, where I will have more time to work on the channel instead of doing my day job. Um, uh, but there will be a dedicated video about that once that is more finalized. But I guess you guys heard it first. Um, I am working towards doing more of YouTube and doing less of day job. And with that comes some consequences. Uh, yeah, I know I can still publish to YouTube, but, uh, but with that comes some consequences regarding income and stuff like that. But last year was a pretty good and if we can match that somewhat, I should be able to do less work and more YouTube or electronic board design or whatever you want to call it really that I do. Because <laughs> I, I don't call myself a YouTuber per se because I do so much other things next to it. But yeah, I'm looking towards uh, basically last year, the community and the channel grew really rapidly. Uh, where it now kind of it can't go back to the way it was, but that also means I can't really sustain a full-time job anymore with the things I want to do. So uh, I'm having to make some choices in that regard, and I'll uh, I'll make more about that public uh, in the next few months, and once that's all finalized a bit. But yeah, I'm looking towards doing more. It's not full-time, but. It's uh, less work and more of this stuff. What do you guys think about that? Wait, this isn't going right. Uh oh. Okay, back up, back up. I started pulling off the sticky part, which is definitely not the way I wanted to go. 
Hold on. What do they do here? Ten dollars from Russ Strut, Russ Suter. Sorry. Here's a little something to help you along. Well, that certainly helps. That is one of one of the things that that, that actually helps. I did also add a PayPal link to QuinnLED.info. So if you look in the top menu now, there is a donation button. I was very reluctant to put that up, but people were finding ways to donate anyway. So I decided, okay, let's go ahead with that. And then they can if they want to. Please don't feel obligated. I really appreciate it, but you really don't have to. But yeah, it's appreciate it, and it really helps nonetheless. So it's kind of double. Um, sorry, trying to figure this out. The, the, the tape split, so now I have to make a new end. Because you don't want to pull off the adhesive bit. But yeah, there will be changes coming, and in theory, there will be changes for the better for the YouTube side of things. And, uh, well, let's let's give that a shot. See how that goes, and if I can actually make a living, or part of my living at least, uh, doing this stuff. And if last year is an indication, well, that might actually be possible. So... So that is actually the first I've shared about that. I guess it uh, it's uh, what you get for being on the live streams. You get the all the secret information. My son of 11 years old also wants to be a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah, you could start delivering babies for a hobby like Doctor Z's. What? Uh, try to do what you love and make a living of it. Yeah, that's that's basically, I'm going to try and go for it. I mean, I've been trying to build this community for a few years now, and it's working, I think. So, uh, it's either go time or quit time. That's how I feel about it. You should have more guys helping you out with the community stuff that you don't make much revenue on. Oh, that's a good idea, I guess. If you don't try, you'll never know, and you'll kick yourself if you don't try. That's true. Ooh, LEDs pulling. More time for kids. Well, we don't have kids. So, more time for YouTube. <laughs> Would love to see the lamps diffuser over a lower density LEDs per meter so we can compare and see what we can get away for less expensive LED strip. <laughs> yeah, well, um, if you're on the Discord, uh, uh, Drahtstahl or DR44 or whatever, he did a version with 144 LEDs per meter. Um, so you could maybe look at his pictures. Okay, so now we're at the bottom here. Uh, we need to find a point where we can cut it. Now, those are pretty prevalent on this uh, LED strip. Um, let me pull you in a bit closer. A bit closer. So, if you look here, you see... Uh, I don't think you can see actually. You see, I can cut it here and I can cut it here. So I have to see how far it needs to go. So, like that. And then, okay, there's a cutting point right there. So I will cut it there. I hope I didn't destroy anything. Okay, and then I can push this back in. Eh, that's okay. Could have gone slightly further, but I don't think we would have made that point. I'd rather regret the things I've done than the things I haven't. Yeah, well, this is basically one of those deals. Because, <laughs> who knows, maybe after you all say, okay, well, that was a bad choice. Because I don't hate my work. I like my work, too. So it's kind of a choice between two things I'm okay with and I like. But I'd really like to build this out further and make more controllers for you guys and, you know, stuff like that. So it's uh, it's been a difficult choice, but I've decided to go ahead with it. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, now that's in there. And that seems to be sticking pretty well. I need to tighten this nut down. Hold on. You can always go back to work, I guess. Yeah, that is true. Although I'm a specialist in regards to what I do, so if I don't do it long enough, I won't be 
well, wouldn't be that good of a specialist anymore, I guess. But we'll we'll see about that. Okay, that's a lot firmer now. That's good. Um, I guess we'll put the diffuser in while we talk. Yes, more controllers and stuff. Yeah, uh, I've mentioned it on the Discord, but I at least have another analog controller plant for this year. Uh, it's not the DECA Plus, because I'm kind of putting that project on hold for a while, uh, while I work on a different analog board, which I also hope to be able to put out pre-assembled. And I think that's going to be very good for some people. Do we know what he does as a day job? I am a senior storage consultant. So I do a lot with storage and mainly focused on large backup environments. So let's say you have a few hundred terabytes or something like that, that you want to back up. Uh, I'm your guy to design a solution for that. And I do a lot with Veritas, NetBackup and uh, Rubrik and stuff like that. And I will design it, implement it, and maybe troubleshoot it. I won't manage it for you. That's basically the only thing I don't do. You have to do that yourself. But yeah, I'm very knowledgeable about storage, networking, and things like that. So IT consultant. It's hard to keep it in this bend because it keeps coming up. And yeah, I'm pretty, or <laughs> it might sound egoistic, but I'm pretty good at my job too. So my work doesn't really like it that I want to work less, but they won't want to work with me. So I'm not quitting. I'm just going to shift the amount of work I do versus the amount of, well, this I do. So yeah, we'll see how that works out. Ha ha ha. Let's try and get this over here. Ooh. Floppy disks, yeah, that's a bit of ancient technology there. Okay. The uh, the little heat shrink over here. It's just too thick. So I can't really get it to seal perfectly over here. But I think that's okay. New graduation knows it as a save icon. They have no idea. Yeah, right. Yeah, but there will be an official video about stuff changing soon, I think. Have to work it all out. Okay, come on. Sorry, this is taking such a long time. It's really tedious to get it to get into the groove correctly. Weekend! It's only just now weekend there. It's uh, three past twelve now. I'm not. It's not my birthday anymore. We told you to stick it further down the base. Well, I couldn't get it further down the base. That's what we're trying to say. Okay, well, I, I tried to stick it down as far as it could go. But it's okay. I don't think you'll notice too much when it's on. Almost there. How did that... How did this happen? <laughs> I'm actually... I have too much material. Yeah, that's too much. Okay, I'm just going to have to cut it. 
Thank you, Yannick. Let's cut it in little pieces so we get it exactly right. So that's still too much, as you can see. Okay, perfect. Nice. 30 minutes loading time and after 5 minutes the game crashes? What? Okay. I'll do it. I'll take it. I'll clean it off with a cloth later on. This all seems to be in there. Yeah, okay. Uh, who's ready to turn it on again? I am. Let's do it. Wait, why why is there a different color here? That that's odd. Is it having a short somewhere? What the Uh oh. That doesn't look right. Um Let's <laughs> let's undo this part. Hold on, hold on, something's not right. I think it's shorting somewhere. Oh. Let me turn it on again. Yeah, so there's a joint right here. And it's showing a different color past that joint. So I'm going to try and lift it out. Oh no, it's really stuck in there. Let me get a screwdriver. Because it's probably just shorting to the base. Okay, got it. I don't see any issue, but let's turn it on like this. Yeah, so now it looks fine. Let's change some colors. Let's turn it up a little bit. Okay, so that's working. So, is it shorting to the base? Or on the top? I don't see why it would short, but I can put a little bit of the uh, man right where you were done, right? I can put a little bit of this tape under there. No, I can put a little bit of captain tape under there because that's very thin and that will isolate the joint basically. That's fine. Um, So I've cut a very small piece like that. I'm going to put that on the underside of the joint. And let's see if that fixes the uh, corruption issue. Okay, so I've glued part of it back. Yep, that looks better. Come on, phone. Uh, blue. Okay, red. Green. White. Ugh. Okay, that fixed it. Let's turn it off again. And then... Put it back in. There we go. Let's turn it on again. Mm. 
red, blue, green. Yep, works perfectly now. The front grandma <laughs> standing just in a few plastic boxes. Yeah, hey man, you gotta make do sometime. Can't have all the professional camera equipment all the time. Although I don't, I think my quality of my cameras is generally pretty good. This this one here, eh, it's not the best, but it's very easy to move around and it's small, so I can get close up to objects and stuff like that. And I think it does the job. Okay, so I'm gonna get this in here. Nah, it's not broken immediately. Okay, now it's sealed back up. Let's see what it does. Yeah, that looks good. I'll turn the studio lights off in a minute. Let's see, red. Uh, it doesn't look red on camera. Let me uh, do use the uh, the main camera for this. Face. So. Nope, I'll, I'll sit behind it, that's fine. Okay, let's turn the lights off. Uh, ew, ew. Okay. Okay, welcome in the dark. Oh, Drahtstahl. 20 euros, you made it, awesome, thank you. Oh no, the bend came loose again. Let me fix that real quick, and then we'll look at some effects. Might need to glue the bend down a little bit. We'll have to see. Okay, bend back. In. It went back in. So, uh, can I push you guys back? Yeah, there we go. So this is red, some blue, and some green. And well, we can give it more power, so you you can actually see it's it's giving off some light. I can make myself pink. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Whoa, thanks 44DS244. Well, right? That's awesome. I mean, it was his idea. I didn't even think of this. I stole his idea. Oh, I told him. I asked him if it was okay. But, you know, so let's do some uh, some blends. Let's see how much I need for the camera. Uh, that's not enough. There we go. Thanks again, Drahtstahl. That's awesome. Dig quad limit. What? 1LT copper. Yeah, that's all on the website. Sondra will love it. Yeah, let's hope so. Hope she isn't here. <laughs> BPM. That's pretty cool. Oh, breathe. Some of you like breathe. Candle. Uh, candle multi. No. Candy cane. And it doesn't show up on camera very well, huh? Well, I can change my camera settings. Nope, that's the wrong way. Okay, now you have a better impression of how it looks. Let's see here. What should we do? Chun Chun. Pascal Lamb. Five. Oh, it's Canadian dollars probably. Thank you very much, Pascal. That's awesome. Didn't you donate before? Man. Circus. Let's move that faster. That's pretty cool. Uh, color twinkles or color winkles as Dr. Z's calls it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. What? No, you should put power through it. Or at least my boards. Color waves. 
Oh wow, look at that. Uh, maybe more brightness? Look at that, that's awesome. Wow, cool. Dancing shadows. That looks awesome. I hope you guys can see a little bit on camera. Um, let's see here. Fire 2012. Oh, that's pretty cool too. Well, you can't see the top, but that's pretty cool. Fireworks 1D. Let's go to default colors. Fireworks Starburst. Yeah, the camera really isn't doing it justice. It looks great. Flow. Oh, that's a bit blown out. Yeah, it's slow, but... It's, okay, gradient. Nice. Philip, two, two euros. Well done. Looks great. Thanks a lot. You might have to make two segments for some, some of these and run it mirrored. Yeah, sure, you can do that. That's no problem. And it seems the Wi-Fi is also working fine. I mean, it's standing on the table like it would normally. Uh, heartbeat. Nice. Uh, Merry Christmas. Yeah, the colors are washed out on camera. Normally I do uh, some tricks to make it look good on camera, but it's hard. Philip, another two dollars. Sandra will be, or two euros. Sandra will be so happy. Well, I'm happy with the donations. Thanks. Feels like high res LED strip. Well, it is. You can do a meteor smooth. You can do it a bit faster. And then, like that. That's pretty cool. Multi comet. Oh, that's uh, very slow for some reason. I don't know. Noise one. I don't like noise one. Noise two. I like noise three. It's very flat on the camera for some reason. Nope, other way. There we go. Noise four. Eh, noisy palette. Okay. Of course, we all like Pacifica, I think. <laughs> Everyone knows your girlfriend's name, but barely anyone knows yours. <laughs> yeah, my name is... I think more people know me by my uh, nickname of Quindor than my actual name, which is Andres. But Quindor's fine. I mean, people call me Quindor all the time. Palette. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, phase noise is a cool one too. And if, especially if you put it like on a, uh, a custom color. That is awesome. Let's see. Police all. <laughs> the red looks yellow on camera. I'm not sure what to do about that, but that's cool. Let's do it really fast. Woo woo! Well, you can see the reflections and some stuff. <laughs> Popcorn. Yeah. Pride. That's cool. Uh, let's see, a saw, yeah. Oh, sin, sin, that that's pretty cool too. How much power usage did you calculate for this lamp? Well, actually I kind of threw my calculations into the wind because um, if you calculate, we're now using 415 LEDs. Um, uh, I could actually get a power socket meter and meter that real quick hold on let me turn on the light <laughs> let me turn on the light uh let's turn on this one 
Hello. <laughs> Let me get some real quick. Okay, one power socket meter. You've seen uh, me recommend these. Um, turn it off. Okay, turn it on. Now let's see if I can actually do this. Okay, so there's the meter. Let's turn this off. And let's do some measurements, I guess. So the power limiter is off. And uh, let's set it to red. And let's set it to full power. Okay, so that's about 3 amps. some Because it's we're measuring the AC side in this case. So 15 or 16 watts is about 3 amps. Let's do blue. Yeah, same deal. Green. 16 watts. Okay, so that's about 3 amps. That should be decent. Now let's see if we do more if we go to a dual color. So where there's uh, two LEDs on at the same time. So let's go to pink. Yeah, oh, yeah. Actually, we're seeing double. So that is 6 amps. So probably that custom connection we made on that cable, that is actually paying off because... Well, it's almost double. This is a single color. And let's go to orange. And that is a double color. But it's not as double as, um, for instance, uh, pink. Or uh, teal is. Yeah, 23 watts. Okay, sure. Let's go to white. Let's see what happens. Oh, well, it's bright. 42 watts. That's eight, well, that's 8 amps. The power supply is 8 amps. That might be a bit much. <laughs> uh, let's go back. Let's turn that down a little bit. Okay, so um, I guess it takes up to 8 amps and I don't see too much voltage drop. I do see it being slight. If, if we're doing white, I do see it being slightly brighter here than over here. But because of the diffusion, you don't really see it that much. And, um, well, if we're doing colors, it's fine. It's 3 amps, so that, that, that should always be fine. Yeah. That looks good. So, um, well, there's your power measurements. But if we, if we do, like, a simple effect, like uh, color waves, and then we set it to full power, that's only 10 watts. AC side, so that's two amps. That's that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I did put a five amp fuse in there. Uh, maybe I don't have the best quality fuses, uh, but uh, probably if I run it for longer, it would pop. <laughs> that's a good one, uh, Andy. Let's see, color loop. Well, that that will be fine too. Uh, let's do some palette. Uh, where is it? Or noise, noise three, full power. So as you can see, effects don't even use as much as a single color. So palette, palette uses seventeen watts. So that's three, three point two five amps, something like that. I think we're pretty good with a 5 amp fuse in there. Let's see, police all. Don't fail test it. You'll have to unpack the whole thing. Yeah, well, I, I have to know if we can do it for a short while. Uh, let's see, Pride 2015. Yeah, as you can see from the power measure, power meter, uh, 
running effects is uh, a lot less load than doing uh, single colors and stuff like that. I mean, solid glitter. It's only still 16 watts, so that's like... That's like 3 amps, hello. <laughs> Next upgrade will be a bigger PSU. Yeah, I don't think so. China fuse will blow, or maybe not. Well, I've tested these fuses before. They're mediocre, I'll say. Um, yeah. The ones I linked to on my webpage are definitely better ones, because you need to buy fuses which in China which ex uh, explicitly state that they're zinc, not aluminium. That's creepy. Sorry. Trifade. Well, that's just... Oh, okay. Hmm. Twinkle Cat. Twinkle Fox. Can we do random colors? There we go. Hello. Twinkle Up. Washing Machine. Somebody said washing machine. This is the washing machine effect. Oh, we have to full power it. 12 watt. That's fine. It's getting creepier. Bye, dudes. Bye, Roman. Okay, so let's... Because uh, this stream has been going on for more than three hours again. Uh, why can't I do normal streams? Let's turn these on. Let's see how that does. Yeah, and then we need a bit of these. Okay. So, let's uh, put this on... I don't know what uh, blends... Sure, whatever. Um, right. So, that brings us to the end of the stream, really. Um, what do you guys think? Do you guys have fun? Nice work. I finished my loco, too. Oh, actually, I still have to glue the base back on, but that's just some tape and glue, and that's it. So... Nice work. I finished my loco too. Nice. Six kilowatt sky flower light. Uh, that's a bit different. So what do you guys think? Uh, do you guys have fun when I do these type of projects? Very nice. Great job. I would love to show you my LED towers that I 3D printed and wired up. Cool. Well, if you're on the Discord, sure. Post them in one of the channels. That's cool. Great job. Sure. Clap, clap, clap. Lots of fun. Awesome. Thanks. Nice to watch a whole project build. Yeah, that's why I try to do these uh, live stream videos. Because I basically show it from front to end. The things we encounter. How I fix them. I'm not perfect. I mean, I make mistakes, as you saw. And, uh... Yeah, sometimes we cheat a little bit with the guidelines, and we, we check how it turns out, and, you know, I, I, I like showing the real deal, not the produced... Oh, I do produced videos too, but not the... Look, everything on my side always works fine. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, I got some nice ideas for doing kind of the same. Cool. I loved it. What are your next upcoming projects? Oh, uh, I don't want to discuss those. I have lots of stuff in the works. Nothing is done yet, but yeah. Hit the like button. Thank you. That that really helps because YouTube will recommend the stream to other people. Love the stream. Would like to see more projects like this. Cool. Love new DIY LED ideas. It is aimed for your leukste projecten. Okay, cool. What kind of power meter is that? Uh, I think it's also on my equipment and tools page, but it's a Zuritech PR10 power recorder. And it's a really good one because it's really well calibrated and it's really uh, detailed. has some nice functions like a relay and a timer and stuff like that and power recording. And uh, yeah, I love watching build projects. Keep them coming. Cool. Sure. Don't have them all the time, but sometimes I think of some of some nice ones. So, two minutes, then I'm cutting it off because it'll be uh, three hours and 18 minutes by that point. So, yeah. It's a tradition to reveal secrets at the end of the stream. 
everyone is anxious. Well, I uh, I reckon kind of did. First, I showed off the uh, Queen LED ESP32 prototype, or actually beyond prototype, because now, uh, let me see if I can get there. Now it's actually been produced. So this is from the factory. So these are the first 100 boards that will come out. And I'll announce those on my Discord so people can basically help me test them out in the wild. I think they'll perform fine, but I'd like to test it with 100 before we make like a thousand. Um, so that was a sneak peek. This came in this week. Nobody's seen this yet. Well, Dr. Z has seen it yet, but you know, he's kind of my partner in all these things. And uh, so that was a new thing during the stream. And I also shared that I have some plans to change my work YouTube balance, as you could call it. And uh, that will be happening over the next months, too. So I, that's pretty heavy for me. <laughs> uh, what neon LED is that? Well, then you'll have to watch this video. Come on. And all the links are in the description. Ever heard of... Oddectra, no. Thanks for the great stream. Looking forward to the next one. I want one of those ESP32 boards. Less work, more YouTube. That's the idea, Emil. Well, it's also work, I guess, but... Hey, Andy! Reveal the release date of the Quinn LED ESP AE. Remember, mods get one first. <laughs> He's already abusing his power. Oh no, what did I do? Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe if everything works out next week. I can't say more than that. Raspberry Pi Pico experiments. No, I, oh, I do have some projects coming up. First, we're going to do the series about the DIY NAS backup server. And then later in the year, we're going to do a series about setting up a, uh, a home cluster... Uh, within a budget of 600 to $1,200, basically depending on how much power and features you'd like. Uh, so that'll be coming up. Uh, but yeah, that's that's later in the year, but we'll see. It's real-time music analyzer software can control smart LEDs. Would love to see if it can work with a Quinn LED digital. Uh, maybe, probably. Awesome, so you can actually earn money by these crazy projects. Yeah, who knows, right? <laughs> Good morning from Shenzhen. Dutch maker. Cool. Well, you're you're kind of getting the tail end of this. It uses Arduino plus USB. Oh, okay. Dr. Z's will get the new ESP32. Yes, I think I'll sell about 50 in my shop and we'll sell about 45 in his shop. Uh, but we're still working that out and setting that up and stuff like that. So, And in the end, these will be freely available to do your own projects, to plug them into a Quinn LED, etc., etc. So, I have boxes and boxes of LEDs and never seem to get around to make use of them. In just a few hours, you can make an amazing thing. Watching this does light my fire. Haha. <laughs> Thank, dank you well. Dank you well yourself. <laughs> 50 in my shop, lol. What? You're not Dr. Z's. We want a video when you show the lamp to Sandra. Nah. It's 7.32 here. Okay. Will there ever be a Dutch shipment option for Quinn boards? I am still looking into that. Uh, unless I can find a way to do it for about the same price. Um, well, it just doesn't make sense. Because the shipping time is about one to two weeks. So that's not the problem. Uh, you might get hit with import tax. But if I'd import them and sell them, they'd be more expensive anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm still working on that to see... <laughs> oh, somebody said my name. To see uh, what I can do in that regard. I tried. <laughs> okay. So, it's already over time. Guys, I really appreciate you guys for sticking around with another Quindor does stupid project his way and hopefully it works out. I think it turned out uh, pretty good. And, uh, well, I'll let you guys know if she liked it. I think so. I think she'll love it. But, we'll see. Oh, it's uh, it's a bit warm. That's good, I guess. If, it, if the metal is warm, it's heat sinking. Anyway, um, the uh, antenna, uh, the AE is an antenna external, so it would come with an external antenna, yes. 
No, no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm making kits, uh, so it should ship with an external antenna. Now, if you want like a giant external antenna, no, it'll ship with one of these, basically like I showed you. So, okay, guys, have a great evening, have a great weekend. Here in the Netherlands, we're going to enjoy some snow, I hope, and uh, let's hope I can keep this lamp a secret until Valentine's. But we'll see about that. Thanks for watching, and catch you guys later. Bye bye.